Come on, let's say our forecast confession of God's word. Are you ready all together? Today I'm living out of my spirit. God has seated me with Christ in heavenly places. I declare God's word for victory. I prophesy God's word for miracles. No matter what the circumstance, the word will work for me. I'm an overcomer and more than a conqueror, all for the glory of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How many of you have your Bibles with you? Or you've got some kind of device, you can look at your Bible. You can turn to Matthew chapter 13. Praise the Lord. God is good. All right. We're talking this morning. Um, what are we talking about? What, here's, here's the question, what did Jesus teach and preach kingdom of God? Everyone should know that answer that's in Forecast for Life Church. By the way, I usually say this, but if you come to church here at Forecast for Life, and you come three times, you're a member. Uh, we welcome you to be a member. We consider you a member if you come three times. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, let's talk, in about, let's talk about Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. This is good. This is awesome. Jesus talked about the kingdom everywhere he went. That was really Jesus' only message. He didn't talk about anything else. He talked about the kingdom until he went to the cross. Then he went into the grave. He rose up from the grave talking about the kingdom for another 40 days. And I just asked you that question, what did Jesus teach and preach? Most Christians, I know a lot of Christians, most Christians do not know that answer. All of you are really, really smart this morning. You know the answer. And it's powerful. It's needed. Matthew 13, verse 44, Jesus is talking. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. How important is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is like a treasure. Some people are very casual about it. It's the treasure that every one of us needs. Going on to 45, it says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought this one pearl. The kingdom of God. The knowledge of the kingdom of God. I'll say this, we're going to talk about a lot of scriptures that say about the kingdom of God, tell us what it's like, and even where it is. But the thing about it is, we have to know how important it is. I know all of us are waiting for Jesus to come in the clouds. We want him to come. But there is something that we are supposed to do until he gets here. And one of the main things is for us to know about the kingdom of God. Because every single thing that you need in your life, I don't care what you're talking about, healing, deliverance from addictions, uh, depression, whatever you need, to get over or be healed from 
It's in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, you cannot see it. It's unseen and it's a secret. Why is it a secret? If you, if you were here last week, you would know why it's a secret. But I'm going to tell you again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Now, let, let's start with verse 18. The disciples, everybody say disciples. The disciples came to Jesus and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Talking about the multitudes. Multitudes of people came to Jesus. Because they heard that he was a miracle worker. He was healing people. No wonder they wanted to come and see Jesus. They wanted to be where he was. Jesus answered the disciples because they asked, why, why are you telling us all the secrets and not to the multitudes? And Jesus said, because it has been given to you disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. But to them, has, it has not been given. Is that unfair? Not really. This is Jesus talking to all of us, and this are, these are principles of the kingdom and how we can live a life, abundant life, in Christ. So, here's another thing. It's a mystery. It's unknown. It's actually a secret to the multitudes. But not to the disciples. Why? Not to the disciples. Because the disciples did what was told to us in verse 44 and 45. They gave up everything to buy something like the kingdom of God. Jesus said, the kingdom of, like, the kingdom of God is like a valuable pearl. The kingdom of, light, kingdom of God is like a treasure that you will buy for, and, 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 and buy it with everything you have. The disciples did that. They gave up everything. It's kind of like this joke, this joke that I, I heard a long time ago. And this, uh, this chicken was talking to a, a pig. And the chicken says, you know, the far farmer, he's been really good to us. I, I think we ought to bless him. And, and the pig says, well, how are we going to do that? And the chicken says, I think we ought to make him a good breakfast of eggs and bacon. And the pig says, that's easy for you to say. It's just an offering for you. But for me, it's total commitment. Total commitment is what the disciples had with Jesus. They left all their business. Their business, a lot of them were fishermen. They left it all to follow Jesus talking about the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Matthew 13, 19, it says this, and this is another thing for each one of us to know. Anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatches away even what they have. So you can hear, you can come to church a lot and you can hear the word of God going forth, but if you don't understand it, how do you understand the word of God? The, the word of the kingdom. 
You're going to meditate on it. You're going to, you're going to give it first place in your thinking. See, a lot of people are not thinking right. Most of their thoughts are consumed by entertainment on TV. You can say amen or you can say oh no, oh, oh, oh me. Praise the Lord. But see, if you really want to know the kingdom of God, you're going you're gonna to ask God for wisdom, knowledge. You know, if you ever read any in the Old Testament about Solomon, Solomon, it's told to us that he was the wisest man in the whole universe. He was also the richest man. And you know, one thing that happened with him, God asked him, what would you like me to give you? What do you want? Well, don't say anything. But if, if God was to ask most people in the United States, they'd say, I want to be a multi-millionaire. Wouldn't they? You don't have to say anything. <laughs> but most people would. If God said, what do you want? They'd say that. Or some other thing, physical thing. Solomon said, Lord, I just want knowledge and wisdom. And understanding. And then he became the wisest man that ever lived and the richest man that ever lived. We should make our choices be something that's really worth while. Say amen to that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And Jesus, the disciples were asking Jesus because obviously Jesus prayed. A lot of times he went off by himself to pray. And sometimes... We're told that he prayed all night long. And the disciple says, teach us to pray to Jesus. And Jesus said, verse 9, in this manner pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, uh, I know uh, some people that would ask, well, why don't we, because I know some churches pray this prayer every single Sunday. Why don't we? Well, because Jesus, in, in the, if you read the whole scripture all the way to Matthew 6, 9 to 16, it doesn't say anywhere that we're praying in the name of Jesus. That's one thing. The other thing is, Jesus said, in this manner. He didn't say, pray this prayer exactly like this. And even if you don't understand what you're saying, just pray this prayer. And that's what happens in most churches. They pray this over and over every single Sunday and they don't even know what they're saying. Because this, Jesus is saying that we should be praying, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's really the basic thing that we are praying for in our lives. Why should we pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven? The reason is because the will of God is not being done on the earth. I know that shocks some people when I say that. It is not just look around. Stealing, killing, murder, sin on every corner. 
God's will is not being done down here. I know some people, you know, part of the thing that we teach on Wednesday, we teach about how faith works every Wednesday. One of the things we talk about is that a lot of people say things and think about things that are religious traditions. One religious tr tradition that goes around and lots of Christians even say this, they say, whatever happens is the will of God. Or they say, whatever happens must be the will of God. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow it. It's not true. If the will of God was being done, we would see some of it. You know when the will of God is being done? When Jesus is lifted up. When Jesus walked the earth, the will of God was being done everywhere he went. And he said, the kingdom of God has come near you, so repent. Repent just means change your mind. Change the way you think. Because a lot of people just think the way the world tells them to think. The commercials on TV tell us what to buy, when to buy it, and why you'll like it and love it. Take it home with you. And people do that. The, commercial, the commercials would not be on TV. The, you know, ever, you ever watch uh, the uh, Super Bowl or the, or the World Series on TV? Companies pay millions of dollars to have commercials during those times. You know why? Because commercials work. People do what the commercial says. Like one commercial says, one out of four people will have this disease. So take this pill and people will go out and buy the pill. Commercial told me some people watch t TV and and the media will tell you who to vote for. And they'll do it. The media lies to us. <laughs> Just like the devil. Praise the Lord. So, the kingdom of God came to the earth because Jesus brought the kingdom to the earth. And I'm going to save this for next Sunday. But actually, the kingdom of God came to the earth. And that's where you and I are going to be for a thousand years. Right here on the earth. Because the kingdom is coming to the earth. We'll talk about this later. That the kingdom of God and the I'll say this to you too that I'm going to talk about. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is not the same thing. So be in church next Sunday and you'll find out what the difference is. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 for just a minute. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 I want to look at that. And this really is my job I'm going to tell you about. My job in verse 11. Jesus gave to some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So when I hear that, I, I, I'm listening real close. For the quipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And this is important because this is us together 
learning about the kingdom of God and how the kingdom works. And we, we know the scripture tells us that Jesus said to the Pharisees one time, he said, people look over here and people look over there for the kingdom, but I tell you, Jesus said, I tell you, the kingdom of God is within you. That's huge. We should be aware of that everywhere we go. You are, when you walk into a, a neighborhood, if you walk into Myers, you are bringing the kingdom of God. And I hope you act like it too when you get there. <laughs> when you come home from work, you're bringing the kingdom of God. When you talk to the neighbor, you're bringing them the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. You don't know, a lot of you don't know how powerful you are. We need to know. I'll tell you what. We've talked about the kingdom before at Forecast for Life Church. But this time is different. I, I don't know. I've just had revelation knowledge flooding in my heart about the kingdom. I don't know. Do I look different today? Because I feel different. I feel like I got the kingdom. Amen. I, don't, I know I don't look different, but I'm, I, I, I'm serious. It's changing me. The kingdom of God will change you. And actually, the kingdom of God will change you day by day. Every day. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, that, that's God. He's so good to us. He wants to change us. If we think he did something so wonderful yesterday, wait till you see tomorrow. He wants to do something even better. That's God. And he's, he's got mysteries to tell us. He's got revelation knowledge to give us. He's got secrets to tell us. But you have to be committed. You really have to be committed and say, this is where I am. I'm in the kingdom. I'm not coming out. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom of God, Jesus told us how to pray for the kingdom to come on the earth as it is in heaven. By the way, in heaven, the will of God is always done. What's heaven like? There's no sickness, so no dying, no crying. It's wonderful because the kingdom of God and God's will is done in heaven. That's why we're supposed to pray that it comes to the earth. Glory to God. And we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God in our lives. Lots of Christians, I had, let's just be honest about it. Lots of Christians say the words, I seek first the kingdom of God. But if you look at their life, it tells a different story. I don't want to tell a different story. I want to tell the same story as when I stand up here and say, I put the kingdom of God first. Does it mean before everything? I didn't say that. Jesus said it. Jesus said everything. Seek first the kingdom of God. Not about your wants, your needs, any of that. Seek the kingdom first. And all the things that you need will be given to you. Matthew 6.33. That sums it up. A lot of people have something else. Actually, if you really be honest... <laughs> with your life 
and you look at your life, uh, one of the scriptures we use on Wednesday is that we should examine ourselves to see if we are really in faith. We should do the same thing on Sundays when we talk about the kingdom of God. Are we really? Or do we have other things that are more important? I had a guy tell me once, matter of fact, somebody that went to this church a long time ago. He said, I put my family first, God is next. Listen, I, I always say this. If you put God first, your family will be taken care of. Your friends. Because everywhere you go, you're bringing the kingdom to them. Praise the Lord. So back to Matthew, uh, I mean Ephesians chapter 4. We listen to the teaching of the kingdom of God and how it works. Verse 14 tells us why. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. This is huge. This is really my life. And this is what I think about when I'm praying for all of you, I pray all, for all of you every single day. I pray in the Spirit. I don't know what your needs are all the time, but I take time to pray in the Spirit every single day for you. So you'll no longer be children. You'll hear the teaching of the Word of God so you're not tossed in to and fro. I, a lot of, I see Christians every day and they are tossed to and fro. Sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down. It shouldn't really be like that. You should be on an even keel. To, working toward the abundant life in Christ. See, if you're, if you're tossed to and fro, usually it's because you're living out of your emotions and not out of your spirit man. So we need to we need to be understanding what we're well you know what I wasn't gonna say this but I'm gonna say it anyway. Sometimes we like to hear things, you know that scripture that says they have itching ears and they like to hear things that they want to hear. <laughs> Some people are like that with the TV and with YouTube. They listen to some stuff, and it's really not the Word of God, but they're listening to these things because it seems interesting. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here. But, the, you know, if you go to YouTube, you can see a lot of people saying a lot of things and it might not be always the word of God I know I know some people that are on YouTube and all they do is make predictions they have words for you the listener and I listen to some of these things and they're not the word of God <laughs> just because somebody says they have a word doesn't mean it's a word. It could be their opinion. You ever listen to op opinions out there? I, I say beware about that. The, the scripture tells us to guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. It should always be that if you're going to tune in, make sure it's the word of God, the word of the kingdom. What Jesus said. 
I believe people are inspired to give words, like out in the church service. People are inspired. It isn't totally God speaking. I can see you don't really believe me. <laughs> it really isn't. The word that God gives you, a lot of times, I'm not talking about anybody here. I'm not talking about uh, everybody. I'm talking about some. Some people get a word inspired by God, and then they embellish on it with their own thoughts. See, I don't, I don't really believe everybody that has the word of God. I check them with the Bible. Are you with me or are you gone home? I think some of you have checked out when I said that. <laughs> it's important that you don't believe every single thing you hear. Because there's a lot of deception out in the world. I think I'll give it a rest right there. But really, take that home and, and, and believe it because the only truth is the Word of God. That's truth. The Holy Spirit will help you discern what's the truth. And the Holy Spirit is always going to lead you and guide you into all the truth. And really, all the truth is right here in the Word of God, the written Word of God. That's what I base everything on. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really good to get a word from God. And I'm really happy to, to hear a word from God. But some people, how can I say this? Some people take advantage of that online. And they always have a word. Listen, the word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, God gives gifts as he wills. Not because some brother doodad says they have a word every single time they speak. Maybe I'm not saying this right. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying to you? <laughs> you measure everything by God's word, the inspired word of God. And if you get a bonus word from a, a, a believer, that's great. Awesome. But it's just a bonus. It's an add-on. It's not what I live by my life upon. I live my life upon what Jesus says. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for your word this morning. And Father God, I'm asking you to forgive me if I said something wrong about words of knowledge. But Father God, we're, we're wanting to gravitate to your word and your truth, Lord God, and we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen.